13 p.m., April 11th, 1970, Apollo 13 lifted off on its way to the moon. This was to be America's third lunar landing mission in a series that had been so letter perfect until now that the public was beginning to complain they were too routine. But instead of a routine mission, Apollo 13 was headed for the first accident in space. thing we'd like you to do is to uh, go ahead. we'd like you to roll right to 060 and know your rates for photography of the comet Bennett to do that we'd like you to enable quads C and D for the maneuver use all your quads and one other qu request we'd like to uh, have okay, you well done. one other request we'd like to have you verify your high gain configuration we'd like to know what track mode what servo and what beam width Okay, Jack, uh, during the TV, we were auto track, narrow beam width, and the primary electronics. And we had a good lockup. Uh, just after we started the maneuver, I was able to lock you up and get uh, real good signal strength. And it just seemed that right there at about 239 degrees uh, in yaw, that the uh, signal strength uh, would just drop off and uh, yaw would go to zero and pitch would go to 90. Roger, we copy. Uh, and the uh, TV show was great. Okay, real fine. Okay, I'm going to maneuver to zero six zero zero nine zero and zero. And 13, we'd like you to, to uh, check C4 thruster. Okay, Jack, the battery charge has been terminated on the battery B. Roger, we see it, Jack. 13, we've got one more item for you when you get a chance. We'd like you to uh, stir up your cryo tanks. In addition, I uh, have a shaft and trunnion okay. for a look at the Comet Bennett if you need it. It is now 55 hours, 50 minutes since liftoff. Disaster is two minutes away and counting. Much of what you are about to see is true. The events of the last four days of the Apollo 13 mission are real. The voices of the astronauts from space are real. Most of NASA personnel are portrayed as themselves. However, as in all recreated history, some of the characters are fictionalized and are meant to represent the spirit of the Apollo 13 flight controllers and all the other men and women of NASA to whom this film is dedicated. There are few heroes in the world. This is the story of four heroes, four flight controllers who gave and gave all they had and then gave more. Okay, uh, we had a problem here. This is Houston. Say again, please. Yes, sir. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. We've had a main B bus underbolt. Roger, main B underbolt. Stand by, 13. We're looking at it. Okay, uh, right now, uh, Houston, the uh, voltage is um, it's looking good. Um, and we had a pretty large bang associated with the um, caution and warning there. And as I recall, main B was the one that uh, had a amp spike on it uh, once before. That's affirmative. That's just great. Yeah. Yeah, I see you. What's up? I'm in mission control. They got trouble. Could be big trouble. Nobody's quite sure what happened yet, but they're, they're losing power in the CSM. They said there was a bang somewhere on board. I think something blew. Blue? You mean explosion? We're just guessing so far, but uh, it looks more like it every minute. Don't you might want to get in early and get on top of things. All right. All right, I'll see you. Well, I'm up for the night. How about some gin rummy? Oh, come on. 
Come on, you know Steve wouldn't call unless it was important. Oh, I'm sure it's important. I mean, everything about that marvelous job of yours is so important. You know, darling, sometimes I can hardly stand it. My, we are a little hostile tonight, aren't we? Oh, yeah, yeah, we're a little hostile and bad-tempered and thoroughly spoiled. You forgot sexy, you know that? And that's the part that makes it worthwhile. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? I'm going to work. That's what the call is about. I'm wide awake. Now, what am I supposed to do? Why do you even bother coming home? Angie, will you grow up? Oh, you know, I am so sick of you being so self-righteous and so self-assured. What good is this? What good is it? What good is all this? The only satisfaction I get out of life is yelling at you! That's great. That's great. Go on! Go on back to that lousy job of yours and leave me alone! For the first 45 minutes following the explosion aboard Apollo 13, Mission Control tried every means available to restore life to the dying command module. The real problem was no one knew the extent and seriousness of damage to the spacecraft. Apollo Control, Houston, continuing to troubleshoot with the Apollo 13 crew, closely watching oxygen quantities and pressures in the command module. Hi. I thought my husband was the only one who came in hours early for a shift. Well, he's the one that called me in. Huh. How are you? Everything okay? Oh, sure. I just got out of a movie. I decided to drop over and kiss Steve goodnight. I never get a chance to at home during a mission. You know, you're really something. You and Angie ought to spend more time together. Maybe a little of that patience and understanding would rub off on her. How is Angie? Not very patient or understanding. Is that what you're saying? Well, she just gets a little uptight sometimes. Come on, I gotta hurry. Yeah, right. Here in Mission Control, we are now assuming that the command module power system will continue inoperative. Procedures for swinging around the moon and using the lunar module power systems are now in effect. We now show a velocity of 3,210 feet per second. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Roger, 4.0. Uh, say again what it is, please. Uh, three, able, three, eight. procedure in fuel cell one. Our O2 uh, pressure is going down, as you note, and the uh, temperature confirms it. 13 Houston, uh, we're working on the big dash now, so uh, turn high. Hey, how you doing, base? We're up to our necks right now. I can't talk. What's going on? Things can't be as bad as you look, and uh, Don't bet on it. Don't okay, bet on uh, nothing. Uh, we, uh, got a loud bang. Bang. we got also a restart. Uh, can you copy that? No, it's okay. What are we holding hands for? Because you were shaking. Take it easy. You're not supposed to push yourself too hard, remember? Don't do that. To me, not in here. I'm sorry. But don't worry. Yeah. Okay. I'll be uh, late or something. I really don't know. So what else is new? We're starting to think about the lamb lifeboat.
This is Apollo Control at 57 hours, 46 minutes, ground elapsed time. We have an apparent serious oxygen leak in the service module, and we're now in the process of powering down the command module with less than 15 minutes remaining of electrical power to the CSM. Hello? Tim, where are you? I've been worried. I, I'm sorry, I couldn't call before. I mean, things are wild around here. Look, there's a lot of extracurricular stuff because of the Apollo 13 trouble, and I'm not going to be able to get home. Is this the way it's going to be? I mean, every time we have a fight, you're just going to go off and sulk. Angie, will Tim, you... Tim, Tim, the vector's coming in. All right, I'll be right there. Honey, I've got to go. <laughs> Fine. First you tell me to listen, now you tell me you have to go. Angie, I want you to do something for me. Tomorrow's the 15th income tax deadline. I haven't even started the return. Can you take a whack at it? Income tax? You mean you want me... I don't know anything about filling out returns. Tim, you're the one who always does these things. Honey, there's nothing to it. Just work from last year's return and follow the directions, okay? All right, I've got to go. Bye-bye. For Mr. Michael Jarvis. He's a CPA in downtown Houston. Here. So that's the way it stands, ladies and gentlemen. The lunar landing has been scrubbed. And right now we're leaning away from a deep space abort. We expect Apollo 13 to continue its flight around the moon. And then she'll come home. Now, if you'll excuse me, that's all. Right? Okay, Prince. That was all very reassuring, but what's really going on? I can't give you any more, Freddie. Off the record, Gene. Off the record. I know all those guys. How bad is it? Well, Freddie, we don't know how bad. There's a distinct chance that everything we're doing right now may be a waste of time. You mean they can't be saved? We don't know. If there was an explosion out there and it got to the heat shield, then there's a thousand other things could go wrong before re-entry. Hell, they could be gone in an hour. That answer your question. Twelve thirty-five a.m., April fourteenth. Three and a half hours since the explosion aboard Apollo thirteen. In space, the astronauts are now crowded into the lunar module. It has become their lifeboat, and at Mission Control, crucial decisions must be made. Okay, okay, let's gather around, white team, so nobody will have to do any shouting to be heard. Eagle, Lou, take a look at this, will you? Bell, what are our options, eh? All right. I think we got three choices. None of them great. First, we make a small burn with the lamp. Just enough to put them back in a free return. That'll give a splashdown in something like 110 hours. Uh, 110, no, no, no good. Consumables in the limb will not stretch that far. We gotta get them back sooner. That's right. Option two. We wait till they go around the moon. Then do a super burn on the limb. Speed them up so we can get splashed down in about two and a half days. Yeah, I don't like that one, Retro. A burn like that would use too much fuel. Uh, we'd have no margin for mid-course corrections. Yeah, that's right. I told you, none of these are great. Number three. For my money, it's the best. It's a combination of the first two procedures. We do a small burn right away, put them back on a free return. Then a second burn after they've come around the moon to refine course and gain speed. My figures say a four minute burn there should do it. I know you don't like the idea of two burns. I'm not in love with it either, but those are the choices. If anybody can come up with something better, let's hear it. Okay, okay, I buy it. Start putting your numbers together. We'll read them up to the guys as soon as we go on ship. Makes it a little tough on us. Two burns in 18 hours. Well, it'll keep us off the street nights. Okay, here's about three minutes to go. We're all for away. Gene Kranz, flight director. He's promised not to change that vest until Apollo 13 is safely home. First problem, stop them from going into outer space. Swing them around the moon. Okay, master arms on. One minute. Uh, Roger, Aquarius. You are go for the burn. 
Capcom, the capsule communicator. He has direct voice contact with the spacecraft. Ecom, with overall responsibility for the command module. GNC, responsible for guidance, navigation, and propulsion. Telmu, responsible for the LEM's vital systems. And Control, responsible for the LEM's guidance, navigational, and propulsion systems. Fido, the flight dynamics officer, in effect the chief pilot of the spacecraft. And Retro, in charge of re-entry and all mid-course corrections. Okay, it looks like we had a minus uh, 0.2 bias. Today we're burning. Okay, Aquarius, you're looking good. Data select, start feeding me vectors as soon as the burn's completed. Auto shut down. I tell you, that's, uh, that's some kind of shift, right? Oh, uh, yeah, and we're gonna be facing more of the same. I, I can't get used to it, man. I mean, middle of the night shifts. What I want to do, what I really want to do, is stop off somewhere for a beer. Is it eight o'clock in the morning? I mean, I gotta go home, get the kid off to school. When are you gonna get married, Shimon? Well, when I find the right girl, though. Yeah, well, you take it from a loser, buddy boy. You're better off single. What's matter? You got a hot date? Uh. I'm expected at home, Lou. I, uh, th there's an illness in my family. Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. I, I hope everything's okay. I'll see you tonight. Yeah. Hello, Mama. He's been asking for you. Your brother is with him now. I'll go in. Uh, Shimon, couldn't you stay home these next few days? Well, it, it's our busiest time, Mama, a mission. And there's been a problem. I'm needed more than ever. Your father would like his two sons beside him when he dies. Is it too much to us? I'll go on in. Ah, uh, good. You're here. Well, I am, you're tired. Uh, bad night? Bad enough. He, uh, he just dropped off to sleep. Well, maybe I better not disturb him. No, no, he said to be sure you came in just as soon as you got here. Uh, Shimon. In his room at least, Shimon. <laughs> yes, Mama. Thank you for reminding me. Mike. Mikey? Up here, Dad. About ready for school, son? Hello, Lou. How long have you been here? I don't know. 20 minutes, maybe. Just having a nice little visit with my baby. Hey, Mom, I'm no baby. Yeah, well, your mother gets a little confused sometimes, I guess, Mikey. I mean, uh, you practically were a baby when she left. Oh, Lou, that stinks. When I get your clothes on, you're gonna be late for school. Don't sit down. You're not gonna stay that long. Come on, Lou, can't we at least be decent with each other? Decent? You... <laughs> You take a walk seven years ago. I mean, seven years ago, Donna, you walked out. Then all of a sudden, you turn up here. You, you just turn up with a belated attack of motherhood. You want to be decent, you knock off this custody jazz you dumped on the kid and me. You just won't believe I've changed, will you? Hell no, you haven't changed. All right, Lou. I guess we'll just see each other in court. Hey, Donna. Donna, don't you come sneaking around here anymore. Bothering Mike while I'm at work. You hear me? I mean that. I mean it! She gone? Yeah, she's gone. <laughs> Go 
coast is clear. Can we really have to go to court like she said? Hey, hey, hey. Come here, son. Come here, sit down. It's gonna be okay. There's nothing to it. I mean, you have to do it. Just... You go down, you tell the judge that you want to be with me, just like you always have been. And everything's gonna be all right. Just so you're there with me. Oh, come on, Mike. What do you... Of course I'm gonna be... I, I promise you, I'm gonna be right down there with you, son. Your daddy's big boy. Your daddy loves you more than anything in this whole world, Mikey. Don't you know that? Okay, Dad. See you later. Check and check. Nothing wrong with the numbers, Tim. No, it's... It's the course that's wrong. I mean, it's off a full degree since the last burn. Something's making him drift. If this keeps on like this, we're gonna have to tweak up the trajectory all the way home. Fido, have you got the hack on the new trajectory? Roger, flight. Course off one full degree, PC burn, no error. It's drift, cause unknown since the last burn. And we'll give him a new course correction in about 24 hours, eh? Hey, white team, listen up, one. You guys have been acting so gung-ho lately, I managed to get you a special project. At first, I'm gonna take you offline. That means the other teams are going to be managing the mission for the next 60 hours. But while they're doing that, we're going to be writing the new re-entry checklist. Oh. Okay, okay, I know. Yep, 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 yep. I know it's a, a hell of a job. That means we're going to have to condense three months' work into less than three days to make up the entire checklist. But we're going to do it, and we're going to do a hell of a job. I know we're going into an area we never had to handle before. You, in particular, Ecom. That means you're going to have to plan a complete command module power-up. That's something we never even had to simulate on the ground before. Now, what is it? 2,300 hours. I happen to know a lot of you guys didn't get home after your shift last time. I'm going to give you a chance to do that and get a little rest. But I want you back here at 0,800 hours. I want some lead left in your pencil, and I want them sharp. We've got a lot of work to do. Oh, yeah. And one more thing for the duration. The white team has been designated Tiger Team. <laughs> yeah, all right, all right. That's right, so... Good night, Tigers. Well, let's go home, old friend. Tomorrow's gonna be a long day. Long three days. The morning masses here at New York's St. Patrick's Cathedral are especially well attended today. Hundreds of New Yorkers have come out of the brilliant spring sunshine into the darkened cathedral to celebrate special masses for the safe return of Lovell, Hayes, and Schweikert. The special services will continue throughout the morning, and the afternoon will begin with the last of the services, scheduled to coincide with splashdown. This is Jim Giggins, ABC News, reporting. Jean Krantz sent you home to sleep. Yeah, I will. When? Tonight? Tomorrow? Next year on Tuesday. Tell me what you think of the problem the Americans are having now up in space. Well, I think that, it, you know, I wouldn't like to be up there because it must be terrifying to be up there, you know, knowing that you ain't got a lot of oxygen and could run out any minute. And I wouldn't like to be up there. You know, it's a shame, really. What did they get? If what you're doing doesn't work, or if you fall to pieces at the last minute, what do their families get? What do their wives get? What do I get? I want to punch in the mouth. How about that? As opposed to what? A dead husband? I guess I'll take a punch in the mouth. Babes, don't do this to me now. No. When would you suggest? I've kept my mouth shut for a solid year. I'm watching you drive yourself straight into another cardiac arrest. I can't take that again. As a matter of fact, neither can you. 
All three doctors agree on that. Do you see that? You hear what the men are saying? I know nothing about the uh, workings of the thing, but they're doing a grand job, and I sincerely hope they get back safe and sound. Babe, I'm going to bring these guys home. I am. Because I am the best retrofire officer that ever came down the damn street. I will drop them closer on target than has ever, repeat, ever been done before. I will. I can't cut my next physical. So this is the last go around for me. I'll write it all the way down and I don't care what it costs. I don't care. That is not as selfish as it sounds. It isn't. Babe, I have to. Those guys are lost without us. Got it? Thank God I have my two fine sons. Do you know how much you both mean to me now? We know, Mama, we know. I need you, both of you, so much. It's okay, we're here. We're here. Shimon. Um, I'll speak to my uh, flight director in the morning. I'll explain. Uh, they'll replace me. It's 2 a.m. Yes, Angie, I'm well aware of the time. Aren't you coming to bed? I mean, first you don't come home all day, and then when you do come when home... I do you... come home, I have to do the tax return, which I seem to recall having asked you to do it. I just imagine that conversation. I told you I don't know a thing about those lousy tax... All right, I know... I know it's hard, I do. But you're never going to learn anything about anything until you get off that duff of yours someday and try. Look, I could have had those taxes done for free today by a CPA. Only I chickened out. Oh, boy, do I wish I hadn't. This, uh, CPA was... Was his name Mike Jarvis, by any chance? Look, I got angry at you today. That, well, the way you hung the phone up on me, well, you practically ordered me to do the taxes. So, so you called him? It was perfectly harmless. And I bet he just couldn't wait to come over here and do our tax return. Boy, I know I shouldn't have said anything. I forgot how ridiculously jealous you can get. What are you doing? I'm going to a motel, Angie. I've got to have some peace. I've got to straighten out my head before I go back to work in the morning. Tim, please, Tim, I don't know what I'll do. <coughs> Tim, please, I'm frightened. Tim! How you doing there? 
there, Aquarius. Okay, Jack. Okay, uh, sometime when you can get two guys available there, and uh, you could construct one of these lithium hydroxide rigs. What I'd like you to do is uh, get all the material together and then uh, we'll just run through the steps together. During the night of April 14th, a new problem develops aboard the spacecraft. The LEMS air purification system is proving inadequate. Lethal levels of carbon dioxide are building up. The mission control engineers must design a makeshift device which the astronauts can build from materials on board and pray that it works. Then, April 15th, Tiger Team meets prior to starting on the new re-entry checklist. Okay, you guys all know Pettit, don't you? He's our span. He'll be in contact with each and every one of you, making sure that the work you do dovetails with the work of the other controllers. He's also in charge of assembling your work into the final checklist. So work fast, but let's be accurate. We all know what's at stake here. I want an A number one Tiger Team job. Now let's go, huh? Well, Evan, good. I meant to talk to you. I wanted to tell you how really pleased we are you're on the Tiger Team. I know you're the most experienced Econ man we've got, and nobody knows the command module as good as you do. It's great. Thank you. Oh, look, is something wrong? Uh, no, I was just going to suggest the command uh, module contractors send their people over to work with us. Yeah, well, he'll be here today. Hello? What do you think? Uh, just the trench now, or you want the brother guys? Tim, wake up. Uh, no. No, let's, uh, let's keep it you and me and Guido for now, okay? Right. What the hell's the matter with you, anyway? Uh, just trouble with Angie. I've got her on the brain. Get her off. You know, we got work to do. April 15th. Since the spacecraft started its homeward flight, its course has drifted from its intended trajectory. Now this shallowing drift is becoming dangerous. If it continues unchecked, Apollo 13 will glance off Earth's atmosphere and bounce away into space to be trapped by the gravitational pull of the sun. a.m. Wednesday, April 15, approximately 36 hours since the explosion aboard Apollo 13. A mid-course correction has been scheduled to bring the spacecraft back into proper approach corridor, but the cause of its continuing drift is still unknown. Hey, Mel. All right. We've got to make this quick, Mel. I'm up to my neck in problems upstairs. Whew, you never know. Shouldn't be down here at all. Yeah, look, I can, I can guess what you're going through. It's been all over the papers and TV about the astronauts. Yeah. We've got problems of our own now. They, uh, they moved up the custody here, and it's 3 tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow? Tomorrow? Oh, no, no, no way, man. I, I just can't make it then, Mel. Uh, you're going to get a, what do you call it, postponement? You think I haven't been trying? Well, you're going to have to. I mean, I just... I just don't see how I can make it down to court tomorrow. You know, there's no legal reason for you to have to be there. I can pick your boy up, take him... Mm -mm. No, no, no. You see, that's just it. Uh, Mike's already scared to death about that hearing. You know that. And he made me promise. Absolutely promise. I'd be right down there with him. So, that's... Uh, well, all right, all right. Look, you pick him up at school. I'll do my damnedest to pull an hour off tomorrow. Somehow. Or something. I, I don't know. I'll be down there. I'll be there. Thanks a lot for coming. Okay. I appreciate Aspirin. I thought they kept some in here. Wait. Here. I guess everybody's got headaches today. Yeah. Thanks. You all right? Yeah. Just a little one. Thanks, Gary. Two minutes.
Now, right now. This is Apollo Control at 112 hours. Telemetry from the spacecraft tells us that the handmade lithium hydroxide canisters are continuing to function well and carbon dioxide is holding at acceptable levels. Mission Control is still trying to determine the cause of persistent drift in Apollo 13's trajectory. Since the mid-course correction approximately six hours ago, the spacecraft is again nearly one full degree off course. Venting is suspected but its source continues to elude us. Mission Control, Houston. I, I... I came as soon as they told me you were here. They didn't shave this morning. <laughs> I didn't know it was morning. My mother needs you, Shimon. It's morning of the day they're putting our father in the ground. Funerals in six hours from now. Mother needs you for her sake, for your sake, in the eyes of your God. Come home. Don't, Abraham. Please don't. If you don't listen to me as your brother, and listen to me as your rabbi, I tell you that what you're doing is a denial of your faith. Stop it. Listen to me. Try to understand. There are three men out there, living men. They have mothers, too, and wives and children. Yesterday, they were in danger of choking to death until I helped design a makeshift air purifier. Today, something else may happen. And tomorrow, well, tomorrow they're coming down into the atmosphere. Abraham, there is so much that can go wrong. We don't know if the heat shield was damaged. If it was, they'll burn up. No matter what we do. We don't know. Oh, God, Abraham, there is so much to be done and so much we don't even know how. I'll try. I'll try and explain it to Mother. Shalom, Shimon. Shalom. seen him since yesterday morning. I'm his wife, and I consider this an emergency. I'm sorry, Mrs. Cordell, but our instructions are very firm. Instructions? Yeah. Uh, this is Lou Matthews. I have an outside call, please. Mm-hmm. Hello? Well? Yeah. Yeah, we're here at the courthouse. Where are you? Well, I'm just not going to be able to make it. I, I can't get away. Believe me, I tried. I uh, shouldn't even be taking his call, as a matter of fact. Okay. I know you'd be here if you could. It's Mike who wanted me to call, Lou. You'd better talk to him. Hey, Dad? Listen, Mike, uh, I know I promised you I'd be right down there with you, and I, and I, I, I meant it, but uh, throwing all, all kinds of stuff, so much stuff at me up here, son. Yeah, but, Dad, I need you. We have to be in court right away. I'm really scared. Well, I, I just can't help it, son. I mean, if... You know, if there were any way, I... Look, I can't talk anymore, Mikey. Uh, I'll, I'll try to explain it to you when I see you, okay? Dad, don't hang 
up on me? Oh, come on, now, wait, 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 what's the matter? What, are you, are you crying now? Are you crying on me? I can't help it. Yes, you can help it, Mike. I mean, you, what are you, baby? You show some guts. No, I mean it, young man, you stop crying right now. You act like a man. Don't, don't hang. astronaut Tom Stafford. He's running the re-entry problem in the command module simulator at Houston. No. No, 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 look at it. Look at this. Your controller's still lousy. I told you it won't work this okay, way. Okay, Retro, okay, take it easy, will you? Let's give Lewin a chance to work it out, huh? Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry, Simon. Forget it. Uh, Commander Stafford, we're going to try the maneuver uh, another way. Now your roll needle and your pitch needle. Roger. Now in the roll needle and the pitch needle. Cordell, punch that call in here, will you, please? Hi. What? You remember me? For Pete's sake, Angie, they said it was an emergency. Oh, yes. I talked to the lady in Athens. She said I couldn't get through to you unless it was an emergency. Angie, what's wrong? I can hardly hear you. I, I created my own emergency. I took a wrong. You did what? I took the whole box. That is it enough emergency. Well, you really did it, huh? Yeah. Now will you come home? All right, all right, okay. Just stay put. I, I can be there and in... No, Angie. Telling me that you love me. You don't want me to just lay here and die. You listen to me. You get into that, John, and you stick your finger down your throat. I'm going to hang up. And then I'm going to phone for an ambulance. But that's it, Angie. That's it. It didn't work. Lisa, this is Tim. Angie just called. She, she overdosed on sleeping pills. Tim, how could she be so... I'm sorry. I'm by my tongue. Look, I'm sorry to get you involved, but if you could just get over there and, and take it... Don't worry. I'm on my way. Thanks. Tiger team. All members Tiger team. Report to staff support room, mission control. Tiger team, report to staff support room, mission control. This is Apollo control. 123 hours, 48 minutes. Apollo 13 is 97,232 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity is 5,996 feet per second. We are now 18 hours, 52 minutes from entry. Sorry to do this, but I, uh, I thought you'd better talk to him before I take him back to the apartment. Why, what's the matter? What happened? 
Well, he was just so darned upset after talking to you on the phone, Lou. He told the judge he wants to go back with Donna. What? Now, look, look. We've got a week to appeal before we have to hand him over. I got that with some mighty fancy footwork, I don't mind telling you. You mean he's, he's not final? No, 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 no. As soon as Mike calms down and tells the judge how he really feels, we'll get it reversed. But it depends on Mike. That's why I brought him straight here, so you could uh, make your peace with him before it gets any worse. Yeah, okay. Uh, you hang tight. It's uh, some kind of curve. You threw at your old man. Hmm? What'd you think? Because I lost my temper, said some dumb things to you, that I didn't want you around anymore. Hmm? That it? Hey. Well, come on, Mike. Don't... You know how wrong that is, son. Mike. I don't know. Well, listen. Mel said if we go down to the judge next week and you, uh, you tell him that you, you know, you were mad at me. That you, you didn't mean it when you said you wanted to live with your mother. Did you do it that way? Right? Please, son. Okay. Okay. That's great. Listen. No problems next week. Right? I'm going to be... I'm going to be down there with you. All the way, son. All the way. But look, just, just let me sit a minute before we go home, huh? So how do you feel besides empty? I don't need a lecture. No, you don't. What you need is to have your pretty little tail kicked a country mile. To subject your husband to this kind of childish stupidity. Angie, I've never said this to anyone before in my life, but you are one selfish, thoughtless child. Oh, swell. I, I mean, I'm sure Tim agrees with you, so uh, why not make it unanimous? Not good enough, lady. After the fact, it's too late. It just so happens that your husband and mine are going through the worst three days of their life. And if you can't see that, you're blind on top of everything else. When I think of the nightmare... <laughs> Lisa! Hey, Lisa, wait, don't! I'm sorry, I, I didn't realize I upset you this much. <laughs> Angie, you're amazing. That wasn't anything to do with you. It was Steve. You're not having any trouble, are you? I might be a widow any minute. Is that trouble? Steve had a coronary, a bad one, a year ago. He swore me to secrecy. Didn't tell anyone at NASA. He managed to work up a bunch of phony excuses why he couldn't go back to work until he was able to act reasonably normal. Why? Why didn't he tell anybody? Because he's addicted to that bloody job. I think he'd prefer to die rather than give it up, and he just might get his wish. Do you know what I'm doing? I'm helpful. The understanding wife. Kiss him on the cheek. Tell him, go ahead. Stay in the pressure cooker. Work yourself to death if that's what makes you happy. Lord. <laughs> If you breathe the word of this to anybody, I'll break your neck. Come on. Hey, nice job. Thanks. Okay, I've been going over your work here with Span. It's exactly what I thought it would be. One hell of a tiger job. Now, we're going to start the read-up to 13 in about five hours. I want you all here to follow the read-up, and I want you back on those consoles because we're going to fly the re-entry. I suggest those of you that live close by go home and get some sack time. The rest of you can stay over in the dormitory, but all of you, 
get some sleep. I want you back here in five hours. And, uh, look, uh, I want to be out of this vest by noon tomorrow. I'll drive you home. No, you go ahead. I'm uh, I'm gonna do the uh, dormitory thing, like Matt said. Okay. See you later. Yep. you look like? Peter Pan? <laughs> you, uh, uh, you all right? Yep. Charlie Horse. Oh, okay. Okay, you take it easy. See you tomorrow. Feeling like a perfect idiot. Nobody's perfect, Angie. Kim? Hmm? Is Steve all right? Uh, yeah. Of course, when I left, I tried to settle him, but everybody. Why? Oh, nothing. I, I was just wondering. Uh, I don't know. Lisa seems worried about him. Watch over him if you can. Take care of each other, we always do. It's funny. It's not like you. What? To worry about other people. Tim? Have you stopped loving me? I mean, is there anything left? I'm just tired. I've got to get up in five hours. I'll wake you. should have been there for the read-up. Why'd you let me sleep through it? Anyone ever tell you you've got a streak of megalomania? Sounds nasty, can you take penicillin for it? <laughs> Believe it or not, Steve, they managed without you. Just barely. Kranz agreed you needed all the rest you could get. As soon as we hit the console, it's a retro mission in space. Yeah. Tim, about that. About what? If I, uh... If you get the feeling in there that I'm gonna drop the ball, don't be coy. Step in. Hey, come on. We're a team, that's all I'm saying. We're a hell of a team, you know that? Yeah. So how come I don't even like you that much? And, uh, Aquarius Houston, uh, Roger that. And we're standing by for your body access line and your, uh, zeroing 404, 405, 406, going to 470. Okay, uh, hit it. It asked me before, Joe, to go up 400 plus 3, which I did. I assume you had changed the script again. Okay, yes, uh, Fred, we did tell you to do that a while ago, and it, uh, it doesn't matter. You're looking good. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Shift change complete. White team on the consoles. Fido. Roger, flight. 
Spider, we're still showing a trajectory decay, about half a degree since the last mid-course correction. Can't seem to nail down whatever it is that's venting, huh? Okay, Flight, I'm watching. Raj? This is Apollo Control. At 134 hours, 53 minutes. In Mission Control at this time, we've just had a shift handover. Flight Director Gene Krantz has taken over. We will not have a change of shift briefing. The Flight Director plans to remain in the Control Center through splashdown. Retro. You think we need any corrective measures? Retro, you read me? Retro. Uh, negative flight, not till mid-course seven. Raj? White team, this is flight. We're reading exactly eight hours till Splashtown. Now, gentlemen, that means we'll be eating lunch today off the consoles. Let's go, let's bring them home, man. Huh? Okay, I'm at uh, Bing's uh, bit of impulse right now while we're firing. And I'll go back to the ag mode. As soon as we get rid of the service module, uh, Joe, I think I'll be able to maneuver a lot better. Sure thing. Okay, Jack just reports that all thrusters fire up both ranks. The morning of the last day. By now, the voices of the astronauts revealed to the world what the controllers at Houston already knew. The strain, the weariness, the uncertainty. Before this day was over, the crew of Apollo 13 would either splash down safely or be burned to a cinder upon re-entry. Copy that. We copied that report from Jim Lovell that service module separation was at 138 hours, 2 minutes, and 8 seconds. And as you heard, that was ahead of schedule. We presently show Apollo 13 at 35,611 nautical miles from Earth. Lord, he looks 100 years old. Here's the attack. Okay, Aquarius. Uh, Houston, recommend you terminate the average G, over. Okay, I've got her, Roger, sir. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, for your information, Jim, you'll be coming up on an RCS caution light. Prettily and uh, no sweat, over. And there's one whole side of that big uh, business. Is that right? Right by the, uh, look out there, please. Right by the high gate antenna, the whole panel is blown out, almost from the uh, base to the uh, engine. Copy that. Yeah, it looks like it got to the uh, SPS bell, too, Houston. Uh, you can see the SPS engine, huh? Wait, look. That's that, uh, just dark brown streak. It's really a mess. Okay, take pictures. Uh, we want to conserve RCS, so no unnecessary maneuvers. Over. I think you better tell them to take a look at that damn thing. Give us some idea if it got to the command module. For what is now, Houston? Okay. Okay, Joe, I'm now looking down the SPS bell, and it looks, uh, looks okay on the inside. Maybe it is just a streak. Okay, copy that, Fred. Uh, was the bell deformed on the outside, or, or just nicked, or what? I think the explosion, from what I can see, Joe, had, uh, had stained it. I don't know whether it did any actual deformation or not. Okay. Man, that's unbelievable. Yeah, and Joe, it looks like a lot of, uh, a lot of debris is just hanging out to the side uh, near the S-band antenna. Apollo Control, Houston, 141 hours, 28 minutes into the flight. Apollo 13, now 11,590 nautical miles away from Earth. For a re-entry, the three crewmen will be in a shirt sleeve environment, not in their spacesuits. We're standing by now for reports of jettison of the lunar module. At 141 hours, 28 minutes into the flight, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Okay, uh, Houston, do we have a go for pyro arm? Okay, just copy that. You go for pyro arm. Real fine. Okay, follow that. Farewell, Aquarius, and we thank you. This is Apollo Control, Houston. At 141 hours, 31 minutes into the flight, we have had lunar module jettison, and for Apollo 13, the age of Aquarius ended at 141 hours, 30 minutes, ground elapsed time. Uh, Retro, this is Flight. We'll need your re-entry pad figures very shortly. Roger, Flight. Working on it. Fido. Fido here. How's trajectory shallowing anymore? Not so much. Seems to have slacked off after lem jettison. 
That's where the venting must have been from, the limb. Yeah, you know, Roger. Uh, Retro 13 is asking for your re-entry pad figures. Roger, flight. Entry pad follows. Lift vector is up. Numbers mid-Pacific, 000152. Retro, the back room is questioning. Lift vector up. In view of the trajectory shallowing. Question for back room. How come everybody thinks they're a retro officer doing re-entry? Okay, okay. Settle down, all. Retro. Lift vector is up. Repeat up. Now, Roger and copy, Retro. Five minutes to go now for re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. Now reading a velocity of 34,335 feet per second. Range to go 2,921 nautical miles. Flight Director Gene Krantz now going around the room, posting his flight crew as to the status. Retro. Go. Fido. Go. Guido. Go. GNC. Go. Ecom. Go. Surgeon. Go. Inco. Go. Capcom, all systems go for re-entry. to see Houston, over. Go ahead. Okay, we just had one last time around the room. Everybody says you're looking great. Thank you. Okay, loss of signal in about a minute. In uh, entry attitude, we'd like Omni Charlie. And welcome home, over. Sir. Apollo Control, Houston. We've just had loss of signal with Apollo 13. Our last velocity reading was 35,837 feet per second with a range to go of 1,791 nautical miles. Flight, this is Retro. Coordinates for splash, 21 degrees, 39 minutes, south of 165 degrees, 22 minutes west, right on the Iwo Jima's flight deck. Oh, Roger, Retro, and well done. Retro. Angie, there's a phone in that little big IP booth. Will you call a doctor and an ambulance? Tell them cardiac emergency. Apollo 13 should be out of blackout at this time, and we're standing by for any reports of signal acquisition. Each shield was damaged, they're dead. It was all for nothing. They're burning up right now. Shh, shh. The doctor's on his way. Odyssey, Houston, we're standing by here, over. Okay, go over. Odyssey, Houston, over. Okay, we read you, Jack. Here we go, Uh, Roger on that. 
Okay. <laughs> Honestly, uh, Houston, we show you on the main, it really looks good. Shoots are on the TV monitor. They're coming right down on top of that carrier. Here we go. Here we go. A retromission all the way. Roger, fire. Copy that. Tim? It's all right. It's all right. The doctor's on his way. Let's go wait for him. Tighter. Tighter. Yeah. Hard. Right. 